Hi, welcome to part two of Friday's random plantings. Down here, I have a plant that I grew from seed. Its scientific name is Albermoschus maniheart. I'm probably mispronouncing that. It's called Sunset Hispicus. I grew it from, um, from seed, and I'm planning it in this area to add a tropical look. It has large flowers that resemble a hispicus that are yellow with a deeper, kind of like reddish center depending. Um, I like the leaves a lot, the nice shape and it does have that tropical look. This is actually related to uh, okra. So we're going to be planting it right over here. What's already here is a hairy ball plant. Um, Gonfranus, I can't remember the specific species. And then we got a Miscanthus and a Salvia and the Cantha, Santa, Bra Santa Barbara. All of these are really tall plants. We're talking within the four to five foot range. And all that's to create a tropical look. So let's get planting. So Sunset Hispicus is a, it's a heat loving plant. It loves rich moist soil and if you look at the soil it has a lot of organics in it which is great. It's, if you're going to grow it and you're within its hardiness zone don't be surprised if it takes a while to wake up in the, um, the following year. It needs that extra heat. So it will probably be waking up May, June-ish if you're living a little bit more up north. If you're living way outside its comfort zone, um, you can always grow it as an annual. And it will flower the first year. Especially if you gave it a head start in a greenhouse. It does produce fruit. And I believe you can eat the seed pods because okra what you're actually eating is the seed pods um i'm not going to be doing that i'm probably even going to be taking off the seed pods so they don't sell seed um so let's get to planting so this plant i wanted to have a really good um sturdiness in the soil so i'm going to plant it a little bit deeper than it is in the pot in the previous video, I mentioned that when I was transplanting seedlings that you could do that because um, they will make um, roots from the main stem. Hispicus are one of those plants that um, could do that. So let's get it out of the pot. It's getting kind of windy. It's kind of hard to do this one-handed. And let's take a look at the root system. Oh. Look at those roots. Those are nice, good roots. And whenever you're moving something on you want to make sure that it doesn't get root bound because at that point the plants and they'll be starts to become stunted so let's let's get this guy in there make sure it's nice and secure backfill it boom it's planted so in terms of maintenance, if you're living uh, like in Florida or Southern California, this plant will act as a evergreen. In my zone, it's going to die back down to the ground. So probably cut it down like in January, early February before new growth starts to come up. Um, other than that, this plant's an easy plant. It doesn't need a lot of care. The flowers are really good at attracting all types of um, pollinators. I noticed a lot of the hispicus relatives tend to attract some of the larger bees. And I also noticed honeybees enjoy them a lot. So that's something to uh, keep in mind if you're wanting to encourage those, those um, insects. So yeah, that's the end of part two. Part three is next.